Here's a fun baseball fact. After every Chicago Cubs home game, one of two flags are raised atop the scoreboard in Wrigley Field to inform locals and whoever else might be around each contest's outcome. It's a tradition in the Windy City, one that goes back to the 1940s. The Cubs started playing in Wrigley in 1926 after calling seven different parks their home since the franchise's inception in 1876. Scoreboard construction was finished above the center field wall in 1937 with the addition of a masthead the following year. When the club is victorious, a white flag with a blue capital letter W is raised. These are known as white flag days. On days of a loss, the flag color scheme is different. A blue flag with a white letter L goes up. Once each game is concluded, the white win flag is raised over the left side of the scoreboard, or the blue loss flag is raised over the right side either one replacing a strand of flags which shows the standings of one specific National League division. If a doubleheader is split, both flags are raised and flown. Originally, the color scheme for each flag was reversed, but changed in the 1980s to the pattern we are familiar with today to match those flags honoring Cubs players who have had their number retired. Individual wind flags, known as the Cubs wind flag, W wind flag, or wind banner flag, are changed after each victory. In recent years, blue or white lights complement the flags so passers-by can know the results of that day's contest. Since 1949, the white flag all Cubs fans admire has been raised over 2,800 times. The Houston Astros settled into a new ballpark in the year 2000, eventually calling it Minute Maid Park in 2002. At one concourse, a Phillips 66 gas station pump keeps track of all home runs by the home team. The energy giant is headquartered in Houston. The stadium also has a connection with the community, a literal one being it is situated right next to Union Station. The team keeps the city's railway history alive in the form of a replica 1860s train. A tradition which began in 2000 is that each time the home team hits a round tripper, the train blows its horn and runs along the upper deck's perimeter. When members of the Miami Marlins smack one out of their home park, a 75-foot-high colorful structure full of waves, seagulls, and marlins comes to life, including a spinning action and colorful blinking lights. The architecture was moved to the outside of Marlins Park in 2019 to allow more access to fans, yet is still active throughout games. It also bursts to life every afternoon at 3.05 p.m. in honor of Miami's area code. Milwaukee's Bernie Brewer gets a bit more exercise when the Brew Crew smacks a dinger at Miller Park. Each blast causes him to descend down a slide in celebration. The slide's color was changed from yellow to white in 2021. The event became popular starting in the 1980s, when the mascot originally slid into a mug of beer. It's been a staple for New York Mets fans since 1980. A Big Apple, get it? rises out of a large hat beyond the center field wall at City Field and lights up to convey another flushing homer. Measuring 16 and a half feet high by 18 feet wide, it continues the tradition of Shea Stadium's favorite fruit. The original is on display outside of the current ballpark. What's your favorite team celebration? <music> <laughs>